Hello everybody, hopefully your 4th of July went all right. Mine wasn't too bad though. I'm not like a big like fireworks type of person, right? And so I was watching the movie Insidious. Have you guys ever seen Insidious before? It's on Netflix. It's the freakiest mother freaking movie ever. So here I was, just chilling on my laptop with my little headphones on, doing Zach things, hanging out, you know, on Twitter and that sort of stuff. And there was like a little demon like walking around the corner making weird Alex Jones noises. And then because of the fireworks outside, all of a sudden, you know, this little demon's like walking around making these creepy noises, doing demon things in the corner. And then all of a sudden I hear boom, 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 boom outside. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I wasn't scared. But my homie Will Farrow here, he was terrified. So that was my 4th of July. And uh, anyway, I woke up this morning. It's really easy to do videos now because it's <laughs> it's literally in like a corner, though I do have to like, you know, spruce, spruce. Spruce? Spruce? Make this bitch look a little bit nicer. Let's just put it that way and change the lighting. But anyway, I thought about this. I woke up and I was like, what should I do a video on today? I know. Very first time I got on live television during a anti-Trump protest. So it was Trump came to town. It was in Eugene, Oregon at U of O. And uh, I should get a coffee sponsor. Anyway, he was he was at town. There's a Trump rally. So it was like there was like a, a building and then there was a fence around the building and Trump was in that building. He was about to give a speech. And then there's all these protesters around there. Now, for a second, I was like, well, hold on a second. Let's be a little constructive. Let's let's break this down for just a half a second here. There's all these protesters yelling at the, you know, Trump people. And there's media circled around. Now, as a political columnist at this time, like a, a local one for the papers and stuff, I knew what the media wanted and they wanted like a little snippet of someone who looks like a representation of their average college student. They're going to try to find somebody who's relatively stereotypical. So like a stereotypical bro or a sorority girl, whatever. And so I was like, oh, I should probably get on live television and talk about policy. But to do that, I need to look like a bro to try to attract that type of attention. So which, you know, I already look like a bro. So then I had <laughs> I have a picture I'll show you guys. I'll like post it. I had a uh, black hat backwards with like this metal little like metallic buckle thingy right here and then I had a really bright striped black and white shirt washed out rolled up jean shorts and white adidas indoor soccer shoes it was the tackiest thing I could possibly find on top of that too like my facial hair was even worse than it is now it was like really like patchy and stuff too Mm, it was just perfect so there's two yeah there's two cameras and then the first one was this girl. She was like a really, you know, I, I knew she was like this really nice girl um, talking on the microphone, whatever. And I'm behind her. I have a sign that says Drump on it, like D-R-U-M-F. If you guys don't know what that is, you can just Urban Dictionary that. My happy self was scooting into her frame really awkwardly to try to get the attention with the sign because I knew that after that, when they stop you know, filming for a second, like talking, they're going to look and ask for an interview because it's like, I'm kind of the elephant in the room at that point in time. So I had an interview with her and that was pretty cool, but that wasn't the live one. That was like a little snippet they're going to use later. It's like, okay, cool, whatever. And then there is somebody else who was like, oh, hey, can I get an interview with you as well? I'm like, oh, you happen to want an interview? Oh, it looks like I just happen to be, you know, lucky to be the type of person that you want to interview at the moment. (laughs) Look at how that works out. But anyway, what I wanted to do is I want to talk about policy, like I said. So he asked me, so uh, why are all of you here today? And I was like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, and I grabbed the microphone. And I was like, okay, drop it. Yeah, so actually we have three specific reasons why we're here. And most of which are just complete policy substance in terms of like why he wouldn't be a strong candidate. The first policy is... Dude rips the microphone away from me and says, Justin, Trump's about to speak. And then they cut me out. (sighs) Damn it. Damn it. So close, guys. I'm sorry. I tried. I really tried. (laughs) There's even like, you know, audiences like TVs that were shown like there's houses behind the camera. Like because it was kind of it was relatively in a neighborhood. And you could see like the faces of like what's going on. There's like a two second delay. So close, guys. So close about just burning this dude right before he got on camera to give a speech. I apologize. So that is the story. Moral of the story. Try to keep the microphone and talk until they 
well, I have to cut you out. Like, cause I can't physically stop you, you know, and give like a, an update. Like, oh, Trump's about to speak until they cut you out. Try to get a few words in before Trump talks to try to burn him before, you know, he says whatever it is that he's about to say. So anyway, guys, have a nice 5th of July. Remember, all countries matter. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That was a joke, you know, like the, the all lives matter, all countries matter. Anyway, wasn't sure if I should say it, but screw it. Here we are. Have a good day. Get on camera or don't fight a good fight or fight a terrible fight. Um, yeah.